My last couple of videos we've been looking at the Porcher and Fire Department, the early uh, Porcher and Fire Department, and specifically uh, the first firehouse, which was on Water Street, that you see here next to this large building to uh, the left. And we'll look at that building in just a moment. Of course, the firehouse didn't always sit here. Other business went in, and actually other buildings went in there. And perhaps the one that we recall uh, the most uh, from our generation was a pool room, a class of pool room, and before that it was many other types of pool room. And for those more sophisticated among you, it was a billiard hall. And it was most often referred to as a billiard hall, especially in the early 1900s, late 1800s. As you can see here, it was originally wedged in between two rather large buildings, the white building on the right, which we already discussed caught on fire and was destroyed. Then the Sanborn building, uh, the three-story building, uh, uh, to the left of it. You can also see from this photo that uh, fire damage was done to the pool hall as well. And once the new building was uh, built uh, to take the place of the white building, uh, not near as large as you can see in this picture, uh, in this particular picture was uh, Fletcher Beef Buffet. And uh, you can see it wasn't nearly as large as the white building. And just to refresh your memory uh, to where this was actually located, it would have been right across the street uh, today from the, the federal building. Or the old post office, or I should say the old, old post office. We know that the pool hall was located between two large buildings at one time. Uh, from this photo we can't really tell uh, what the fire hall was wedged in between. And when I came across this picture in the newspaper that had an expanded view, we can see what was to the east of the fire hall. The signage uh, looks like it says Kate Clax, but if you look carefully, it actually says Kate Claxton. So I checked all the directories for a business by that name and could find none, and I couldn't find anyone that was even living in Port Huron by that name. So then I did a little bit more research because now I piqued my interest and. As I look closer at this, I can see that there really isn't a building here. It looks just like the signage itself. And below that sign that says Kate Claxton, uh, there's like posters hanging, for as near as I can tell anyway. And so I started researching this name. And uh, I found out there's quite a story behind this lady called Kate Claxton. Kate Claxton was an American actress. She made her uh, first appearance on the stages of Chicago, and uh, she played uh, largely comedy roles. Uh, she became famous in a uh, play called The Two Orphans, and she became known as one of the best emotional actresses of her time, whatever that means. Her first starring tour around the country was in 1876, so this uh, could have very possibly uh, been uh, taken the picture that we looked at that had the signage Kate Claxton could have been taken uh, uh, on that first tour. On December 5th, 1876, actress Kate Claxton was thrust into her most terrifying role. It was on that day that the Somerville, New Jersey native and still rising star rushed to the front of the stage at the Brooklyn Theater and attempted to prevent a panic of the audience as flames danced all around her. It was an unusual situation because only the actors and actresses could actually see the fire is behind the stage. And at first there was just a small fire that, uh, that was caused by the canvas getting too close to one of the gas lamps. Of course there were no fire extinguishers in those days and the buckets that were filled with water were too far away and they feared that by the time they got them the flames would shoot higher. And so they tried beating the fire with sticks which only seemed to spread the flames. Brooklyn Theater had a capacity of almost a thousand people. And that evening, they uh, were almost to the capacity, they had over 900 people in attendance. And about 300 of those patrons lost their lives in that fire that night. By the time firefighters arrived, it was too late for those people that lost their lives. The fire raged through the night and destroyed nearly the entire building. When would-be rescuers were finally able to get in, all they found were bodies melted together. Up to 100 of the victims were burned beyond recognition and could not be identified. 
Here you see a drawing of the funeral procession on the way to the cemetery. In the cemetery, the unidentified bodies were buried in a mass grave. A 30-foot high granite memorial was later erected in their honor by the city of Brooklyn. This fire wasn't bad enough. Ms. Claxton was on tour the following year and stayed at the uh, Elite Southern Hotel in St. Louis, one of the finest hotels in the country. In those days, hotel fires are rightly to be dreaded. The Southern Hotel proudly claimed to have a new annunciator. It was an early heat-sensing alarm. Patrons felt very safe there. But shortly after 1 a.m. on April 11, 1877, the first alarms were screams from guests and employees who saw flames climb the freight elevator from the basement. Most of the 300 guests escaped, but the whirling blaze killed 21 guests and workers and collapsed the Southern Hotel into a jagged smoking pile. Among the dead were eight who jumped. And once again, Kate Claxton escaped the fire by using a little ingenuity, she wrapped herself in wet towels and rolled down the stairs, she said. And if you're wondering about that fire sensor, the annunciator, well, it finally did go off after the hotel was in flames. That second fire at the hotel was all it took for the sensationalist press of the time to brand her as a token of bad luck. Miss Claxton herself observed people taking extra precautions each time she checked into a hotel. Until finally cartoonist Thomas Nass came to her defense with a drawing for Harper's Weekly, portraying the press as torch-bearing donkeys ready to destroy Kate Claxton's career for the sake of newspaper sales. In fact, the publicity occasioned by the fire, the mudslinging, and Miss Claxton's plea for restraint and fairness generated a great amount of sympathy, only helping her career. A few weeks after this cartoon appeared, the actress sent Nast a note expressing her heartfelt appreciation. I take this, the very first opportunity I have had since my return from the West, to thank you for your great and unexpected kindness to me. You have done me, with a touch of your wonderful pencil, a service no words I am clever enough to think of can describe. Accept, sir, the assurance of my lasting gratitude. I thank you. I thank you. The cartoon received favorable notice in much of the press, and the sinister insinuations against the actress largely subsided. The theater fire went down as one of the worst theater fires in history. But some good came out of it because many laws were passed concerning theaters and the protection against fires in the future, including brick walls and fire marshal inspections on every performance and so forth. So that was the good that came out of it. But Kate almost lost her life in that fire. And I thought you might like to read her first-hand account in the newspaper that uh, was written about that uh, fire. And uh, there was also a song uh, written about the fire. And so as we play the song, I'll let you uh, go through uh, some of the text here. You can pause uh, at your leisure and, and read it. Uh, but you may enjoy the, the article itself. So let's take a listen to this song that was written. Oh 
what doors they were open at seven the curtain was rolled up at eight them that had got seats they were happy outside they were mad that were late the play it went on very smoothly till sparks from the scenes they did fly it's then that men women and children oh god save our lives they did cry we never will forget the two orphans bad luck seems to be in its way it seems it were brought to our city the lives of our dear friends to take those black ruins oh god what a sight met our eyes the dead they were lying in all shapes some there were that none could recognize poor mothers there weeping and crying for sons that were out all that night I imagine there was all kinds of anticipation knowing the background of Kate Claxton waiting for her performances at one of the opera houses and anxious to see and maybe even anxious to see if they took any precautions. But the next time you see this photograph and see this name, Kate Claxton, you'll know a little bit more about her. Yes, I realize I went off on a little bit of a tangent. I so enjoy uh, finding the story behind one of the photographs of Fort Sharon. And I thought this was such an interesting story that I'd share it with you. We'll get back on track in our next video. So join me then. <laughs>